Welcome back to the Smart Build Implementation Series. This is part two, systems. So really quickly, we want to go, go through what systems are and just review them. And then in some of our next series videos, we will be um, reviewing them and adding items to them. So the first thing, question that comes up a lot is, well, what are systems? And the easiest way to think of them is a class of items that are all the same colors or require the same trims. So a good example would be looking at this project here where we have an ag panel on the roof. So if I would want to change this to a standing seam panel or asphalt shingles or any, any of those, the trims would need to change. And then the colors would need to change that are available. So to make that all work, and to be able to, to set those classes up and use them, you know, we, we need to go through that process here. So in, in this case, if I change to a standing scene panel with this sample database that I have here, I am automatically uh, getting a filter where it only shows me the standing scene colors and it's also only allowing it to use standing scene trims. So that's how systems work. So jumping over into the setup wizard, and this is the menu that we start in. So we go to settings and systems. So the first thing we'll wanna do is click this plus sign and add a new system. So if we think about this, well, what systems do, do you need? And our generic database, if you're, if you're setting up with it and you're using it, um, here, here's the view that it looks like. So right now out of the box, it comes with some samples in here. We have ag panel, we have a few different uh, metal panel manufacturers, paint suppliers. Uh, we have drywall as an example, shingles, smart siding. So yeah, all, all different types of systems. And in, in a lot of cases, most of these will not apply to your company. But just going through the, the process of adding those. So if we want to set up a new one and maybe the first system we want to do is going to be a, an ag panel. And maybe you offer ag panel, uh, you have a number one paint and a number two, I don't know. But just an example would be if we have an ag panel, we'll do ag panel, just put a one behind it. And the key could be anything, just, I'll just put ag one behind it. So, and, and where can that system be used? So we can, we can say we can use it on the main. It could be a roof product. It may be used for a ceiling. It could be used on the walls. Wayne Scott, upper wall, maybe liner interior wainscot and overhang. So it can be used in all those places. So you just save that and it's that easy. Now, if you think, well, I may have a number two ag panel or a 10 year panel that's only used for liner. So I could, I could create a new system and we could call this ag liner. And I'll put a key in of AGL, abbreviate that. So in this case, I may not want the liner panel to be used as a main product system. And the main, think of that as like a master setting. So we wanna remove the main. And again, you probably don't wanna use a liner product on the roof. So we, we do wanna use it on the ceilings, not really on walls or wainscot or upper walls, but we we wanna use that on the, as a liner and it could be interior and, and overhang. So this is questionable here. So if you have a porch that's put on as an overhang. You, you may need liner in this, in this system. This is a little bit more uh, in depth. We don't, we don't get into that now, but so starting out, we'll, we'll start with these three here. So we save that. So now we have two systems. So other, other examples here, um, maybe you sell asphalt shingles. So we could, we could create a, um, an asphalt shingle system. And again, asphalt shingles, probably not used for the main or not everywhere, but they could be used on the roof. And that may be the extent of that one. So again, just go through here and think any, any system that we need to create would be something like um, a class of items. So uh, another example, drywall. Maybe we have a, we'll use drywall as a liner. And if we have drywall, and we'll eventually add drywall as a sheeting product in our, in our catalog. 
but we first need a system to place it. So we just call this dry. And again, it doesn't, doesn't have a usage. The usage here, we don't, want, we don't want to use it on the main. We don't really want to use it on the roof, possibly a ceiling, interior ceiling, and possibly wall liner. So again, drywall used on the interior areas. Save that. So again, going through here, add, add all the systems that you need for different classes. Um, another example, standing sink. So we're not going to create all these. Um, but I think you understand now um, the purpose of this. And it's, it's a little tough to uh, fully explain adding the new system in, in just in this video that you're watching. Um, and then we, we may have to come back after we get into colors and sheeting and trim because those items go into these systems. And that'll make more sense when we get to that point. So I can say sanding seam, it doesn't, doesn't need to go on the main. I only need it on the roof and I save that. Now, if you would, if you sometimes apply standing seam on your walls, you may want to add the upper wall wainscot and wall uh, in there. So it allows you to use that product in those areas. So when you're done here, you just save the system that you have identified. And at that point, this, this setup um, part is done. So if you save all these, we do have a, a separate product systems menu to help identify and place um, the items or the trim items or the sheeting items into those, into those parts. So if you go into settings and the product systems menu, now we're not going to go through this right now. Um, this will be in, in one of our next sessions. So looking at that product systems menu, it's a, it's a, it's a place that you can click on a system and you can easily manage your systems as in right now we see on the left column there's there's no items in the ag panel we just created and then we have all of our trim items and our assembly items here on the on the right so any item that goes into there we would add to the left so again that's just a preview of, of what's coming up and we'll have that in our next session so yes back to the model um, just just know that when we get these systems all set up uh, what you can expect is if you have a new salesperson or someone that isn't familiar with what colors are available, all the, the simple process of, of designing a project, you just choose your system and it filters out and make sure that you're picking the correct colors. And then it also, when you actually go into the trim items and the sheeting parts, it is filtering that list out and only showing items that are in that class. So the last point that I want to make here and, and to help you understand when it comes to systems, uh, what is really important is if we have different systems, maybe on a wall, um, a different system for the overhang or a different system for a wainscot. So if we're thinking maybe we have a, a vinyl soffit, that would be a vinyl system for the overhang. So what is really important when setting these systems up and eventually adding, you know, adding trims and sheeting parts to these systems. A good example that we can use would be the overhang. So if we were using a vinyl soffit product for the overhang and we have an ag panel for the wall metal, our overhang system, as soon as we change that to vinyl, it's going to look and see, okay, what, what top of wall trim do I have that is both part of the ag panel and part of vinyl and then it uses that common trim so if you only had a top of wall trim that existed in the ag panel system it wouldn't have anything to use in that case so if you have a bunch of different products that interact at a trim line you have to have a common trim that lives in both of them and another example um, would be we could use a wainscot trim so when you're using a, a stone wainscot, you may have to have a, a trim that, that exists both in the ag panel and in your stone uh, wainscot system. So anywhere that these two uh, product systems or these two panels or trim lines meet, you have to have a, a, a trim or a, a trim in that system that, that fits for both products. So yeah, I hope this helps you. 
um, and we look forward to some of our next sessions and we'll keep this implementation process moving along pretty quickly. Thanks for watching.